Hello, and in this video we're going to have a look at conducting the independent samples t-test in R. Now, this is probably the most simple statistical test you can do, so this is a good introduction for those of you that have just started this series now. Um, as, as I say in all these videos, I'm a second year undergraduate psychology student, only in my second year of statistical training. So these videos normally focus on the pragmatics of how to actually do an analysis rather, rather than actually how it's computed. This, this video is going to be slightly different because say, it's such a simple statistical test um, to do. Okay, so let's dive in. When, when do you do an independent sample t-test? Well, you do one when you want to compare Two, two, two groups of entities, so for psychologists it's normally people with, uh, um, when you've manipulated the difference between two groups, so let's say w w one of them you gave them um, a, a hard task and one of them you gave them an easy task and you want to see how much words they remember or, or what, what, uh, did the same thing, a memory experiment, and one thing you asked them to use imagery, come up with images and and one other thing you didn't. Um, it's a very common test to want to use in psychology, and it, uh, that's what we're going to demonstrate here. So let's stop talking and take a look at our example. <laughs> okay, so I've got the data we're going to be using in this video. A data frame called data. If you don't, if you don't know what data frames are, then check out a previ previous video I did in this series. I'll put in. I'll put an annotation for it. Um, so we're going to say that we're going to want to look at data. And in this particular picture study, we've got 30 participants, 15 in each group. And what we've, what we've, what we've done is, um, again, there's a picture study. We want, wanted to look at how, how much control um, uh, to children perceive themselves to have uh, after playing with two certain toys so um, we we gave one one group a gun to play with and one, one group a, a domino and then measured their regression at some pre, some past point in time and and um, obviously we're predicting that giving someone a, a, a gun to play with is going to result in significantly more uh, perception of control than, than someone giving a domino to play with but how do we how do we test this statistically? Well, because 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 they're two groups of independent entities, we can use um, an independent samples t-test. Uh, before before we do that, there are a number of things we want to check. Firstly, is the independent samples t-test doesn't just um, kind of arbitrarily arbitrarily compare two groups and see if there's a difference. It compares them on a particular statistic it, it can it compares them on their means so what what we should do is I ideally get um get some descriptive statistics means and means and standard deviations and thing, things like that and then this the, the statistical test can tell us whether any difference between those means is actually something we should pay attention to or whether it's probably due to due to chance. So to do, to do, do that we're going to need what's called a package in R and if you have, haven't seen pre previous videos a package is a way to get extra, extra functionality and we need what's called the past x package so uh, um, to do that we're just going to run install dot packages Past E C S, and if I run that, if I spell it right, you need. Sorry, you need quote quote quotations around the package name. I forgot. Uh, if we run that, it should tell us where it's downloaded to. As you as you can see, quite a small file. To load that, we need to run library dot 
fantastic. So we've now given ourselves access to to uh, uh, additional functionality that we can use. But what do we actually want to do? Well, we want to compute compute means and standard deviations and descriptive statistics for our groups. But because our groups are being compared, we don't just want one set of descriptive statistics. We want a set for every group. So how do, how do we do that? Well, we can use the by function in R, and what what this will do is it's not particular to descriptive to statistics. This will take some, some data, and if you if you tell it how the data is grouped, it will run a particular function based on um, separately for each group. So that's exactly what we want to do. Well, we want to we want to so we want to comp so let's um. Get our descriptive statistics. They're all in a da data frame called data. So the first one is what do we, what do we want to apply this function to? Uh, again, we're using it for descriptors, but what well, well, this is a generic function. So well, whatever we whatever we're going to do to this data, what 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 data is it want to use? Well, it's something out of the data frame, and we want to we want to um measure them. Control perception because that's what our uh, dependent variable is. The next thing we need to give it because again the, the whole point of this function is is to split data. So what do we want to split it based on? Well, we want to split it based on. The group someone then so we're going to say again we want to look at uh, still want to look at a data object but we want to split it based on group and the function we want to run which has been made available to us by that past x package is a function called start dot describe so we're going to say Function equals stat dot and describe, and that's going to give us the data for our both groups. So again, it's not just comparing arbitrarily. What what we what we're comparing is is the means, so the averages or the arithmetic means. So uh, we can certainly see that. It looks like people had a gun and um, certainly felt more control than pe people who had a, a domino. But we, um, again, we need to, it's good to get a sense of your data, but then we need to test this statistically with the independent samples t test to see if this if this data would have occurred by chance or, or whether that's um, so unlikely, unlikely that we can. Assume that this is this is a real effect. So we do that with the t-test. Before before we can do the t-test, though, there are, there are several assumptions that we need to check that to be accurate need to be met for the t-test. Um, well, one of one of those is that the variances across our groups are equal. Now, um, if we look at the, the variances for our two groups, one is three point seven, one is four point six nine. Now, the, those, those certainly don't look equal in terms of the raw scores, but um, you, you get fluctuation in different samples, and this is why you need st statistical tests in the first place. So, we're going to run a statistical test to see if this assumption has been violated or whether our, our um, groups are indeed equal. So, you know, in order to do that, we're going to need another another package called car I've already got the car package so I'm just gonna load it and assume and um, you know how to install package packages so I'm gonna say library car and it's gonna load up and one of the things it's gonna load up is this function called Levine test
and we t to use Levine test we wanna tell it what our, our data is so we can say data equals data but we, we want to use what's called a formula object and that takes this form in the case of Levine's test we, we want to we want to first tell it what what variable we want to test so it's it's control perception and then Um, a little, a little tilde. So let's say group. And then define that our data is actually stored in a data frame called data. And here's our output. We find that because our p-value is more than the cutoff of 0.05, we see that, that those variances, although there's a raw difference, Levine says tells us that they don't differ, differ significantly, so that assumption is satisfied and we can go on with the t-test. Um, the next thing I want to check is that our variables are normally distributed. Now, we can do this with a test called the Shapiro-Wilkes test, but we, we want to do it differently for different groups, so I'm going to reapply this function. Again, what, what, what I want to apply it to is the control perception. Now, we want separate output for each group, but in this case we're going to use... We don't want to apply it according to... This that dot describe function. What we want to do is apply apply it to the Shapiro dot test function. And we see we get we get a value for each of our groups. Now because of because those and not less than 0.05 e either of them. This says that essentially um, an easier way to think about this is that any any variability that occurs uh, or any deviation from normality that occurs in either of those two groups essentially occurs by chance um, or it would be very extreme if this if this difference really did exist and, and really was something to pay attention to. Another way you might want to look at normal, normality graphically is to instead instead of um, relying on statis statistical tests is to look at a histogram and we can do that using the hist function um, and tell it what you want a histogram of. So in this case we would want a, a histogram of the values of this control perception variable. So if we run that we can see that uh, um, basically what that normality test is testing is that we should we should see what's what, what's called a normal curve. There should be there shouldn't be that many values at the extreme ends, and the the uh, there should be most values clustered at the kind of mean. And this is a pretty normal distribution, and and is reflected in the test. So it's just that's that's just kind of an, another good check. Okay, so we can now go ahead and run our t our t test, and to do that we use the same kind of um, syntax as we did for the. Levine's test function is it's this type of um, formula again. So I want to say any we predict that group is going to make a difference to control perception. So um, so the 
and that, again we need to give it the data we're going to use but we um we can just say data but the function we're going to use this time is called t dot test now this function doesn't by default give us the standard t test what it does is it gives us something called Welch's t-test, which which means if your variances are violated or your if your um, variances are different or your um, your groups are not normally distributed on the dependent variable, it, it can do 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 some correction. So it doesn't give you a, a bad answer. But we have said that. Um, but what it does do is, in order to be cautious about that, it's it's less likely to give significant result it's what's called less powerful so um so we're going to say that's not true we've got equal variances so we don't need to do the a lesser version so i'm going to say var dot equal is true and this is then going to give us, when we submit this, it should then give us a t-test. So it it does, and um, we get we get a t a, a t statistic at degrees of freedom and our p-value. So this p-value is less than 0 0.005, less than 0 0.05, sorry, um, and so we can say that this difference is significant, and if if there was no difference in the population, it would be unlikely that this difference would have occurred by chance. And we can see our means again to see the the direction of the effect and what we're looking at. So, um, if I were reporting this, I would say an independent samples t-test re revealed that th there was a significant difference, or, or that those who played with the gun. Uh, showed significantly more control behaviour than those who play with a domino and within the sentence report my means. After that sentence I would say comma and basically report this information exactly as it's reported here. T equals or T and then brackets degrees of freedom to 28 and then our T value so equals 3.18 and then our P value so in this case L less than 0 0.01 no, um, no, normally if it's if it's less than 0 0.01 you just report p is less than 0 0.01 you don't you don't report the exact value so that was a simple introduction to how to conduct the independent samples t test in r now i should note that again like i said this was this was an introductory video and and there were some things i so you know, just to make it easy easy to understand, like like for example, the it's been it's studies of st studies have shown that the the Welch's t test that I always said would get done by default is actually better than or uh, more um better at controlling error than the standard t test. So it should be used, but but again we we had equal variances. So to keep this simple, I just I just wanted to do the standard t test, but. Anyway, hope that was helpful and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.